Hi guys, welcome to Parrot Playhouse. My name is April. I'm here with the Puff Man, my white bellied kayak that poops every 15 minutes and he's loaded on berries. So hopefully we're gonna make it through the video. So this video is super important. It's something that I've seen on Facebook. How do you take your parrot to a no contact vet appointment? Now, as you all know, if you've been to the vet and Lord knows you've you watched our videos, we've been to the vet. I am so for taking your birds to the vet first sign of illness, right? It's a big deal here. And it's scary enough when we're in there with our birds, right? It, it can be scary, it can be scary for us, it's scary for our birds, but just imagine right now with this crazy virus, we have to drop our birds off in the parking lot. They come and they take the carrier and they take your bird inside to their appointment. So I've had a lot of experience with this, so I wanna show you how to, what to, how do you do this, and set your bird up for success and you up for success, and your veterinarian up for success. So, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so the first thing you wanna do is, hopefully you have a good relationship with your avian veterinarian. Now I say avian veterinarian, but a lot of you are saying, April, like we don't have an avian veterinarian in our state. Like, we don't have an avian veterinarian in the next state. So you wanna find somebody that has a lot of exotic experience, if you can. So if you don't have a good veterinarian, this is when you gotta do your research while you're at home, right? Before you have an emergency, right, Puff Man? There are sites that will show you what avian veterinarians are in your area. This is the site that you wanna go on, Avian Board of Veterinary practitioners and I got a little confused so I'm just gonna walk you through so you go down here category you're gonna want to put avian country whatever country you live in we are in the US right there state we are in California don't put a city because it'll confuse it I kept getting messed up and then press search and it's gonna think and then there you go so there are all the avian veterinarians in California, there really are not that many. So once again, you guys, you want to look, if you don't have an avian veterinarian in your area, you want to find a veterinarian that has exotic experience. If you cannot find an avian veterinarian in your state, you know, so you got to do your best. I will put the link in the description below. So you can just click on that and find your veterinarian. So once you figure out who you're gonna take your bird to, now this is where you get on the phone and you start communicating with them. You wanna talk to the staff, see how well they can communicate with you, you to them, do you like them? Are they good, do they listen? If you have an emergency, are they gonna like get on that phone and talk to you, explain things to you? Another thing you wanna do is ask them, what kind of carrier do you want me to drop my bird off? Because there's different kinds of carriers. You want a carrier that they are going to be able to get your birds out easily without having to go in there and just like ugh, struggle and stress your bird out, stress the vet out. It's just drama. So if you can have like a carrier that opens from the top, that's probably the best. A pack of bird, my personal favorite, you just unzip them, boom, pull them out. All this hand sanitizer and these wipes, don't use them in the car with your bird. Like, they are so sensitive. They're basically like made out of air, air sacs and they breathe in all this alcohol or God knows what is in all these like wipes and disinfectants and it goes right into their organs and it can kill them. They're gonna be calling you on the phone. So this is how it works. They call you on the phone. They take the payment over the phone. This is a no contact appointment. They do not come out to you. The vet does not come out to you and talk to you in the parking lot. You're talking to him on the phone. So you wanna make sure that your phone is fully charged. You wanna have a backup charger to charge your phone. You do not want to 
run out of batteries. Another thing you want to talk to them about is, cause let me tell you, with all this virus drama going on and your appointment might be set for nine, but your bird might not get seen till 12 because these veterinarians, they're operating on a skeleton staff. So you wanna ask them, should I have food in my bird's carrier? Because the reason why I want you to ask this question is they might say yes, because your bird it might be a camp for the bird. Your bird might be there all day just for an avian checkup. Or they might say no if they think that your bird is going to have to have x-rays and anesthesia. That's where, you know, your bird should not have food in there if they say that, right? So that's a question that you want to ask. Seizures are a problem in some birds. Thomas has seizures when he feels stressed, when he feels cornered, he's regurgitating right now, he's in love with me, he's sexually confused, I'm gonna ignore it. Um, and so that's super scary, it's serious, like literally it's so serious. Your birds can die from that. The last seizure Thomas had uh, was at a veterinarian hospital, not at Dr. Lattice's. We've changed since then, but he had a five minute seizure and he almost died. And they had to put him under anesthesia, which should have been done in the first place. So Dr. Loudis, to prevent this, has recommended midazolond. But what it is, it's a light sedative that can be given into your bird's nostrils. And this is something that you wanna talk with the veterinarian before the appointment, because this is something I'm actually going to be doing with Victoria Cockatoo when she sees her ophthalmologist, which she's never met, baby knows him well, um, Dr. Struby. And I'm going to be picking up this sedative from Dr. Loudis and taking it over to Dr. Struby's office and actually giving it to Victoria in the car myself and sedating her in the parking lot. Then they're going to take her from my car into the ophthalmologist because Dr. Loudis is very concerned that of her having a stroke from being so stressed. So these are the things you want to plan ahead if you have a bird with special needs like Thomas or Victoria that gets super stressed. You want to let the veterinarian staff, you want that veterinarian to know what is coming in. And this is also where you wanna make sure that you have your bird's medical records. If you end up in a situation where you can't see the veterinarian that you usually see. And right now with this virus drama, you don't know what's gonna happen. Like they could be sick, like anything can happen. So you wanna have those files with you. So if you do have a bird with health issues like Thomas or Victoria, you've got those files, you can hand them over to the other veterinarian, their staff, and they can read over before they see your bird. You also wanna pack a lunch for yourself, some water for yourself. You also want to have a cooler because if your bird has gone under uh, sedation, if your bird has had blood work taken, your bird is going to need a barrier too. Something juicy, right? Like an apple, a blueberry, a plum, something that's gonna hydrate them. So you wanna make sure that you have that for them and then their very own water because you do not want to spread your germs, give your germs to your parrot. Puppy hates my germs. Thomas! So when you hand them that carrier, that list from the top, just remind them to hold it like this. Hold one hand under and one hand on the handle because there are times where all of a sudden the handle will give out and the carrier will open and it's just like, you know, you've got a flighted bird, you could have a real bad situation. You also want to tell the front desk people when they're writing down the notes, whether your bird is fully flighted or not fully flighted, you don't want them opening that carrier and all of a sudden you've got like a strong flyer and that bird just bolts, right? So you just really want to let them know about everything. This is also a good time since you're already there to get your bird groomed if you if they have time for it. Just want to make sure you get it all done. You want to make sure you refill all the medications that you need. You just want to get every Thing done because you don't want to have to keep going back and forth and calling the vet staff and taking up their time because like I said they are so busy and you want to get all the information you want to have 
everything written down that you need so you can tell them and you're not calling them like five times a day. You can also put a toy in the carrier, but you wanna make sure once again, it's not gonna get in the way when they go in to get your bird out. And then if your bird does have anesthesia, you want to make sure that the toy is not gonna hurt the bird. So if you got a toy that can just like hook to the side of the cage, away from the door, something that your bird can play with or chew as long as it's okay with your veterinarian. So these are all questions you wanna ask. Then go ahead and do it because these birdies can get bored and a little bit of distraction is always a good thing. Is when they come and pick up my bird, I wear a mask because we have to respect the vet staff they're wearing a mask, we need to wear a mask, and we hand over our precious cargo, hand over the precious cargo, and then when you get your precious cargo back, put your mask on and have some gloves on, right? Because you don't wanna disinfect the handle with the bird in it. So get your gloves or a piece of paper, pick your bird up, it's gonna be okay. It's so nice to see you, Puffy. How was your vet appointment? Put them in the car, close the car, turn on the AC, and then see if your bird needs some food and water. Yeah, Puffy is always ready for a berry. Yeah! <laughs> so we need to be so respectful of the staff and the veterinarian, and we just wanna set everybody up for success because this is a tough time right now, and uh, we just gotta do our best and be prepared for whatever comes our way. Right, Thomas? Yeah? What? Oh my goodness. Look how he is. Oh, I know. Look how handsome he is. That's, now that's a good looking bird. Yeah, my God. Do you want to see another good looking bird? I am so proud of you. You were so good during this video. My goodness, Puffy. He's definitely earned a berry. So anyways, you guys, that's the end of our video here on how to set your bird up for success, your veterinarian up for success, and you up for success. And remember, when you get those carriers home and your bird is out of the carrier, right? That is when you can wipe the handle down and everything and just disinfect your bird carrier with something that is safe for your parrot, right? A little bit of vinegar and water will do, and then just let that carrier sit there for like 48 hours. All right, guys, we love you so much. Don't forget to check out our new channel, Save a Parrot. And if you just absolutely loved this new Bailey Kaique t-shirt, I mean, look at that, so cute. We have them at our Teespring store and link will be below. Stay safe.